Okay, so now we're back, as you may see down the back end there, I've laminated the rest of the transom in, uh, so that's just curing, or it, it's pretty much there. It's just, um, once I bonded it in, it was quite late in the day, so I didn't want to take it any further. So it's had a nice hard cure over the weekend, so the whole layout has uh, stiffened up nicely, as well as obviously bonding that in and everything else anyway. So the next stage at this point, um, we can't put the deck in, we can, but we haven't got any lifting points on it. So that's what again, what the tubes are for, okay? So we need to release the hull out of the mould um, and then pop it on the trolley, which I've got just on the other side of the camera there. Um, and it's a cradle, so it's a mould that's been trimmed down that's thinner. So at least that when this skin goes back in, because like we say, when things like this come out, they can be, uh, they can twist and turn, is it'll reset itself back in that mould uh, in the shape that is expected of it. And that way we can install the deck, install the tube carriers, trim up everything um, and, and then it's, it'll be ready to just be lifted out by a couple of guys onto the trailer once it's ready to go. Okay. So when it comes to releasing components from a mould, uh, there's one thing that you really need to do to start. Okay. So you can use an array of um, equipment. We've got either like hardwood wedges, which has been my go-to for many a time. You get these plastic wedges, which are new to me. Um, well, not new in the sense of not used them, but I mean these are brand new. They're, they're not all trashed and damaged at the minute. Okay, so there's different densities of, of things like this anyway. So what you want to try and do is you want to release the lip from the mould before anything else. If you do not release the lip, then the likelihood of the component coming out is uh, a lot more slim than you'd like it to be, okay? So on the front here, I've just used a very small chisel just to work my way in because there's, there's a lot of tension, surface tension on this area right now, just to break that seal uh, and allows me to start getting some other components in there, okay? So, what you'll find, you just want to work down, you don't have to use um, a wedge in every spot, but at the same time. I usually just alternate, okay, so and you listen, you can hear that travelling down the boat, okay? Okay, so <clears throat> it might crack, it might be like uh, eating a bowl of Rice Krispies. You'll hear all sorts of noises. Cracking and popping, okay. So another thing to do with this as well is you can go along with a rubber mallet and the rubber mallet shocks the two components to split the bond. Obviously there's not an actual chemical bond with these two components because we've waxed it. The wax is a mold release agent and therefore um, won't hinder or bite uh, in some cases it can bite, whether it's too hot, whether the wax hasn't been done correctly. Whether the layup's got too hot and things like this, okay, so. Okay, and I can just hear that moving down through the boat. <clears throat> it almost sounds like when you've got a bit of static or a bit of cling film or something like that in it, it's sort of that uh, TV static noise that's pulling through. So if you are doing this for the first time, I probably would advise uh, safety goggles. I wouldn't advise using a screwdriver because you only learn from doing things wrong. You never truly learn from doing it right. So <clears throat> I've had an accident with this screwdriver, but there was a lot of tension on the mould. I put the screwdriver in there because it was, it was, it was so tight, I just needed something hard enough because I couldn't drive a hard wooden wedge into the mould because the tension was so great between the two halves of the mould that you were just disintegrating everything like this. So you're using, I use some cards to get the initial bit open and then that way you can start inserting plastic wood wedges, whatever, whatever you want to do from that point, okay? Now there was that much tension on the mould that I'd put it in um, and then was stood pretty much directly in line like that with it and then the pressure from the mould closed the two components, forced the screwdriver back out 
forced it back out into my eye. So luckily enough, I um, walked away unscathed. But, you soon learn. Okay, so we've got a bit of tension on the front now. And then now we're just gonna work down relatively quickly. Get down here. <coughs> Of it, a little bit of snapping, things like that. It's mainly just about this point, just getting that lip attached. There's so much tension on that lip because the gelatin has flown over the mould. Yeah, it's flown over the mould and bit to the outside of the mould where it's may have run over a thing like this. So if you break that, Everything else has been coated in mold release agent. And therefore, it comes out with relative ease. pretty much all that side down to the transom. So what will actually happen is this will lift up and out because the transom and the way the tube carriers sit is we need to get it off the back, okay? Um, so at least we know it's pretty much probably out till here anyway, just from the sounds and listening to it traveling down the boat. That outside lip, we'll get around to the other side. Start working this one down. happens at the end is there's an almighty pop which is when the mould actually releases fully from the component
front of me now is the deck for the Ocean 4.2. So I've just laminated the underside of this board with one layer of 600 gram drop strand mat. So when you're doing this, we want to score the timber up like we discussed before with a stanley blade or a chisel or something sharp that you can increase the surface area, create some grooves in it so the resin will seep into it, permeate the wood better and overall give you a better bond. So when you do this as well, is you want to run a paintbrush or a roller around the exposed edge of the ply. Because what we really want to achieve by the end of this process is to encapsulate that timber in resin. Okay? So that just reduces the like, likelihood of water permeating into the timber and rotting it out over long periods of time. So whether water gets underneath the deck, whether someone push, puts a screw into the deck or fixes something into this timber, is you really want to try and prolong its life. Okay, so we just install one layer of glass on the bottom side. This will then be flipped over and then we'll go with another three layers on top. I've also cut out the rear here a small square which we're going to install a well into it and um, uh, well a build pump so we can pump out the deck so traditionally it might normally be a sock um, Jerry has asked or requested that we go with a well this time round and um, it's just playing with some new ideas so same as the timber in the transom is what we've done is we've separated each bit of timber in that transom into its own encapsulated resin shell and again, that's all just for longevity. So we've gone in with the, the normal hull layer on the outside skin, and we've bonded one sheet in on top of the glass, we've put a layer of glass between that, another sheet of timber, and then more glass on the front of that. Okay, then each bit of timber is encapsulated in its own shell of resin, and then that way you're less likely to get any bleed through. So if someone installs a fish finder and transducer, or whatever you know, they put in fittings on the stern of the vessel or putting stuff in the front of the vessel then at least if there is any rot or water to permeate into that timber then at least you've got a barrier going through into the next okay because it's all about long-term survivability because what more that happens more than often more often than not should i say is that people come to us they need a new transom or they need a new deck especially when uh, it's been in timber installed so you know a lot of these pilots wilson flyers dories this sort of thing and even though they are 1980s and they've got this far, but some of the sorry states uh, that we've seen some deck repairs and things like that in the past haven't been ideal. Okay, so we're going to let this cure now. We're going to go over to the hull, start trimming that up, um, and then getting ready for when this cures that we can bond this in and then glass over the top. Moving on now, the underside of the deck has had fiber glass and resin applied. Okay, so. Pre-trim the deck before you get to this point, much easier, and then you're not making any fresh cuts into the timber, especially where you've just sealed it with resin. Okay, there is a slight convex curve in this deck, which is why we've got 56 pound weight sat on the deck there. So at this point now, the deck fits, it's ready to seal, the next stage is bonding it in. Okay, so now we're gonna run bonding compound or make up our own bonding compound out of uh, microfibers, which is cabasil and resin. Now you can use that uh, bonding compound, um, there are some other products available but really you want to go with something that's going to have some sort of structural integrity to it uh, to help hold that. So because this boat has no longitudinal, so no stiffness, no framework underneath the deck, the deck skin, because it's such a small boat, is actually keeping the shape of the hull intact. Okay. So you just don't want to just float this in there, so we'll bead all the way around, get some nice bit of filler under the underside of it, and then taper off to the upside of the hull because we're going to glass from the top of this glass now onto the deck. It's a nice smooth transition, nothing too brash. And then it's all about your filler work at this point because if you make a mess of this, then you're going to have to sand it all down before you can laminate it. Okay, so take your time as much time as you can to get that right so that it creates less work for you down the line. On top of that, I've actually trimmed the outside lip now, trimmed all up and back around the transom as well, uh, so we're moving forward with that. So once the deck has been bonded and laminated in, that's pretty much it. The only thing we'll have to put in uh, is a tow and eye. So we can strap it down to a trailer when the client takes it to go and get tubed, okay? Um, and the only other thing we have to do now is create the tube carriers uh, for the transom here, which we'll show you a bit later. We're now moving on to the final stages of this ocean build. So the deck is now laminated in with three layers of 600 gram chop strand mat. We've created a well here for bilge pump, some spiky bits on there. A well for bilge pump, so they can run that in with a pipe going through the transom. Okay, so this has been glassed up and over and joined onto the rear skin as well. And 
So the tube carrier is on the side here. We've made a separate piece of fiberglass uh, and then bonded it into the shape of here. Okay, it wasn't uh, stretched into that as such. We, we did it on a radius and then just made it thin so it was flexible and then pushed it in, bonded it in, and let that cure overnight. Okay, so then that just gives us this nice, soft, and uh, con uh, consistent shape around the front there. So all that happened now is we'll just fill up any voids with bonding compound that are on the front of here to make this flush and then we'll glass up and over that as well just to join it in and, and make it one piece. Okay, so we'll glass this piece into the hull, this piece into the transom and then the face on there as well, the same on the other side. Once we've done that, we'll be looking, uh, well, we'll be ready to go over, sand it and then paint it with gel coat. Um, they're only coming just inside here with the gel coat anyway because Jerry, uh, the client, is going to be installing a jockey console onto the rib um, and finishing it off how he wants. So he offers uh, three different options with this 4.3 hull um, in different configuration options and then that way you can tailor it to your taste of boating, uh, whether it's solo, family or uh, say wakeboarding uh, and more of a, a fun day boat. Okay, so yeah, we're pretty much there now. It's looking nice, it's all come together. Um, obviously this is the first one for us as well, so it's a bit of playing around and getting used to the templates and the way things go together, but overall uh, pretty happy with the outcome. And then we, you can actually view this boat at um, Boat Life next year. So up in Birmingham, uh, Ocean will be exhibiting this boat, and then you'll be able to go along, check out the boat, and uh, see if it's the one for you. Now with the gel coat done, the last thing you have to do is to take off the masking tape. Okay, so this is a just here, teeth loss to the edge. Let me take it off. Make sure a nice clean cut line for your gel. Okay. So we've got those there, we've got one on the back, tubes there.